you know, the way I see it, we've been invaded and you can look at that any way you want, but there are definitely people around that are not like us. They don't have empathy. They don't have the ethics and morals that we have. They, they want power and control where we just want to be, <laughs> to be left alone to live our lives right and to be able to create and be happy and have the experiences we want. So when we look at the old world, that's what they had. And it was all based on harmony and music. So we have these buildings everywhere that are called cathedrals. Now cathedrals, you know, we're told that they're, they're places of God and, and worship where you go to feel closer to God. But when we look at the cathedrals, they're full of harmonics, they're full of organs, these big pipe organs. Uh, they, they used to be in every cathedral and they've just been dismantled. And, you know, if you've ever seen one of these um, organs, the keyboards, they're massive. Like literally no one knows how to play them anymore because they're so intricate. But we had these pipe organs and of course we have things in our body called organs. So were these organs good for our organs because they were pumping out frequencies? We also had choirs, right? We had the human voice as a frequency. And we've all heard things like Gregorian chants, and these have been proven to be good for our health. Another thing that the cathedrals had were bells, okay, these big brass bells, and they were designed so that the sound went sideways. It didn't go down out of the bell, it went sideways and, and resonated out as a frequency. And they were made from a brass alloy that they say that they can no longer make. They, they lost the recipe, so they can't recreate these bells, or so they say. But they used to be everywhere as well, frequency. And then of course we have these big spires on the top of these cathedrals going up into the sky, up into the ether, collecting free ether energy, free earth energy. And it's been proven scientifically that for every meter you go up in height in the atmosphere, you get 100 volts of electricity. So that's why, you know, these spires are so tall that they're huge when you look at these cathedrals. And, you know, these spires were on most of the buildings. Uh, you still see them around, but most of them have been taken off and most of these buildings have been stripped. And, you know, getting back to the buildings, you know, we can see these, you just need to go for a walk in your city, in your town, and you'll see these buildings. And they're huge and they cannot be recreated. You know that we just can't build them anymore. There've been, you know, some big palaces and things built, and they take decades to build them, but they don't have the sacred geometry encoded into them. They don't have the, you know, the free energy, right? The free ether, energy conductors, and things like this. So that's just to build a building that looks like these old world buildings, but they don't have the same function. So you know, this really is a lost or you know, hidden maybe uh, technology. And, you know, these buildings were, were covered in facades or covered in art and, and messages, really. You know, it's like today we, we look at computers, right, or phones, and we have all these little icons everywhere, these little squares and circles with, it, with a symbol in them. And that symbol means a lot. You know, like a, a white F in a blue box doesn't just mean Facebook. It means, you know, it means everything that Facebook is, right? conversations, talking to your friends, groups, pages, you know, videos, whatever else you do on Facebook, it means all these things. And this is what was on these buildings, all these symbols and, and all this information that were encoded with art and information and creativity. And look at the buildings we get today. You know, that, that style of architecture, the right angle, you know, box, box buildings, it's literally called brutalism. And as you'll see, there's nothing on them. There, there's no information in them. You know, there's nothing to capture your attention. But with the old world, it was all about that. It was all about creativity and making beauty and harmony through harmonics. Another thing that we find from the old world, which is not really talked about, and it's only come into our consciousness very recently, the last sort of five, six, seven years, is something that's called star forts. Now, in the mainstream, they're called bastion forts. And the story is that they uh, were invented. The first ones were built around the early 1500s and they built them until about the mid 1700s. Except for some forts in the USA, which they say were built for the Civil War, 
but they happen to have the exact same geometry as all the other star forts. And that was it. And they were built by basically French and Italian craftsmen who just traveled around building these star forts. And these things are everywhere. They are huge. They are geometrically designed. They're perfectly aligned. They have huge canal and water systems in them. And they definitely, they're not made for war. That they, when you look at them, they, they're a thing of, they, they look like a cymatic shape. Again, it's, it's all to do with frequency. But, you know, as these, you know, those who wish to rule us, they want us to believe that everything is about war, right? About destruction and about division. But the reality is that the old world was the complete opposite. Now, these star forts were an integral part. They were connected to all the cities. They had water running through them. It looks like they were structuring the water through cymatics, through the shapes of their, you know, moats and what we're told are moats. They're not square. Um, they are the star shape that go around these, you know, what we're calling star forts, but they're not forts. They're really just stars. We're not sure what they are. Uh, probably they, they look like they're some kind of machine, you know, harnessing current from the water, structuring water, and, you know, based on energy points, on, on ley lines and vortex points. And it looks like that they're actually mirroring you know, the cymatic of that area because they're all, they just look like cymatic patterns. And these were attached to all the cities and all the old world cities were walled, all of them. We've got the maps and they were all walled, uh, even in the US. In fact, Wall Street in New York is called Wall Street because that was where the wall ended. The rest up to, um, you know, towards the bay, it was all a walled city. And there was a star fort there as well. Uh, the Statue of Liberty sits on a star, on a star fort. Uh, and of course, star fort is a generic term that we're using for all these structures that look like stars, basically, and cymatic patterns. And this is the old world tech. It was a macro system. You know, they're brought in the micro system. Everything's small, everything's micro, these small circuit boards, you know, handheld devices, everything in you. In your pocket and getting smaller and smaller is better right smaller is better closed circuits but the old world grid was an open circuit it was all connected anyone could tap into it and we were in fact a part of it you know we we benefited from the frequencies that th this grid was giving out and, and it harmonized everyone and you know so when we look at the old world it doesn't look like there was any war it doesn't look like there was any lack you know because they were using this technology you know, like I said, to structure water, but also to grow food. And, uh, you know, something, one of these old techs that is coming back, one of these old technologies is coming back and is called electroculture. And this is all to do with using mainly copper, but other metals and also stuff like organite and using it in our gardens and making antennas. And, and literally you can just wrap copper around a stick um, with it, you know, pointing up into the air and put it in your garden and it will draw in and create a field that is good for your plants. And they get results like frost resistance and heat resistance. Uh, they, the plants need less water. They get bigger yields. They're stronger. They're more pest resilient. All these things just from putting a bit of copper in the ground. So again, that, that's a frequency. That's a field that's been created. And this is how this whole place works. It's all frequency and of course science the, the one thing that they take out is the ether they won't mention it they won't accept that it's part of anything they don't accept that it that it exists but the ether is the natural free energy that exists everywhere and again that is what they've taken from us because when you have free energy and abundance you cannot be controlled Remember in the end, nobody wants it unless everybody wants it Come! Oh, God.